colon cancer is the uh, topic for uh, this uh, presentation. And colon cancer is uh, pretty significant uh, because without a doubt, one of the most common cancers among men and women, uh, men and women, if you look at uh, incidence and uh, mortality, colon cancer ranks right up there. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about incidence and uh, mortality among cancers. And uh, here we go. Um, in terms of incidence, in terms of number of cases in North America, the most common uh, number one for men uh, is prostate, uh, most common uh, cancer that happens. But for women, it's a breast. And then the number two most common cancer in terms of number of cases in men is uh, lung. And then women is lung also. And, and uh, number three for both men and women is colon, which is the topic for this video. For mortality, uh, which is uh, essentially the number of uh, deaths uh, due to cancer, the most common uh, cause of uh, death from a cancer in both men and women is lung. Uh, prostate and breast uh, are dropped to number two in men and women. And colon is number three for both men and women. But here's the most amazing thing. In recent years, colon cancer has actually jumped to number two uh, in both men and women in terms of uh, uh, incidence. So uh, it's very important, very common, and uh, definitely needs to be discussed. Um, so why do people get it? What are some of the risk factors? Why would somebody develop colon cancer? Well, family history is a big one. Uh, any type of cancer really has uh, a strong genetic component to it. Uh, it can have a strong genetic component. So if your father had colon cancer, your mother had colon cancer, uh, that can increase your risk of getting colon cancer. Or known risk factors include some sort of uh, uh, um, inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative colitis. Uh, I'm sure you all remember studying that. The duration tends to increase the uh, uh, probability of progression to carcinoma. Uh, low fiber diet. What you eat has uh, sometimes something to do with it. Low fiber diet or a high uh, fat diet. High fat. Low fiber, high fat. There's other uh, risk factors that are not necessarily 100% um, you know, guaranteed, but they are sometimes associated and those include obesity and uh, um, um, you know, body habitus, but really the strong ones are these ones. All right, so how does a person present with the, what are the symptoms? Well, so colon cancer is a, a very interesting one because it actually, because it grows so slowly, the symptoms are sometimes not present until late in the cancer. And by the time the symptoms do happen, the, the cancer is so advanced that it makes the treatment ex exceedingly difficult. That's why you do screening, and we'll talk a little bit about screening a little later on. So what are the symptoms? Well, if the person does have symptoms, uh, you will have bleeding, rectal bleeding, bleeding in your stool. And there's a, there's a term, hematochesia, that's, a, that's a blood in the stool. If you bleed a lot, you can become anemic, and anemia can lead to fatigue and um, all the symptoms of anemia, weakness. Other things that are really important uh, is um, the caliber of the stool. Well, the stool uh, is sometimes uh, referred to as pencil thin um, as it um, comes out. And that, that change in the caliber of the stool, change in caliber of stool, uh, this symbol is change, um, is also another big one. And um, those are uh, some pretty hallmark uh, diagnostic uh, symptomatology. Uh, you might have abdominal pain and uh, you might even be able to palpate an abdominal mass on physical exam. So then how do you diagnose it? Well by far the most common you know the, the gold standard to diagnose it is a colonoscopy. You have to uh, uh, visualize the tumor and um, like I said, uh, this is also screening. Uh, this is also done as a screening test. Um, it's done even if a person doesn't have any symptoms or anything, you know, no bleeding. It's recommended that everybody get one uh, starting at age 50. Um, 
And if you have positive family history, then it's recommended that you get uh, colonoscopy starting at age 40. Now, of course, if you have the symptoms, you'll you know, need a colonoscopy immediately, uh, regardless of age. And uh, other than the colonoscopy, the other tests that are done are a fecal occult blood test, um, CBC, you know, to check the level of anemia. And then once the colonoscopy is done, the, the tumor will have to be uh, biopsied um, to check the histology. And then once you diagnose a person with indeed having a uh, malignant tumor in their colon, you most likely will have to do an abdominal CT to check for met metastasis, to check for metastasis, whichever way you want to pronounce it, uh, for because the, a lot of times uh, colon cancer can spread to other parts of the body, like for example the liver, and the abdominal CT will check that. Another common uh, test that they do is a tumor marker called CEA, carcinoembryonic antigen. It's a tumor marker for colon cancer. So those are the tests involved. Well, the treatment, the treatment is surgical. Um, you know, if, if this is the colon and the tumor was here, you would, you know, cut it out and then anastomose uh, this area to that area. And the treatment, uh, the surgery is often combined with chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy uh, agents most commonly used are f uh, five uh, f fu, which is five fluoro. Uh, uracil and uh, leucoverin, uh, which is also very commonly used. Leucoverin, leucoverin, and then sometimes they also add uh, uh, radiation uh, to uh, the treatment to uh, um, improve the uh, survival rates. So I wanted to show you a little uh, diagram here. Um, uh, this is the colon, and uh, initially. Uh, a lot of times the cancers start off as polyps, which is here, and then later these polyps can transform into uh, malignant tumors. And here's an example of one right here. This is um, a nice little diagram that shows, you know, that colon cancer is not just the colon, but it can also involve the rectum as well. That can present with uh, similar symptoms as uh, any of the colon cancers have. So I'll finish off with a um, uh, vignette. 59-year-old man has been having bloody bowel movements on and off for the past several weeks. He reports that the blood is bright red, it coats the outside of the stools, and he can see it in the toilet bowl even before he wipes himself. When he does so, there is also blood on the toilet paper. After further questioning, it is ascertained that he has been constipated for the past two months and that the caliber of the stools has changed. They are now pencil thin, rather the usual diameter of an inch or so that was customary for him. He is also losing weight. He has no pain, which is the following most likely diagnosis. Um, can't remember if I touched on this. Uh, weight loss is also a symptom of uh, colon cancer. Uh, well, weight loss is a symptom of most cancers. Uh, it's not just specific, but it's it's part of it. And then we also have you know the caliber of the stool. We have uh, bloody bowel movements, stool you know, on the outside of that hematochesia. So all these are characteristic of colon cancer. So the answer is B.